Ziff's Law by David, Kira, and Chris. Hi. Can you guess what is the most often used word in the English language? Hint. I used it both in this sentence and the previous one. The answer is the. In fact, the 20 most commonly used words in the English language in order are the of and to, a in, is I, that it for, you was with, on as have, but be they. Nothing strange about that, right? However, if we were to graph these words, according to how often they appear, a pattern emerges. The second most common word appears half as often as the most common word. The third most common, one-third as often. The fourth, one-fourth as often, etc. If we kept going, that would mean that 670th most common word would appear 1 over 670 as often as the most common word. A simplified equation that would represent this would be p to the power of n is roughly equal to 1 over n to the power of a. p is the frequency of occurrence, n is the rank of the word, and a is roughly 1. In other words, the frequency of the word to the power of the rank of the word is roughly equal to 1 divided by the rank to the power of roughly 1. Isn't that strange how something as complex as language can be explained with a simplified equation? This phenomenon is called Ziff's Law, a type of probability distribution power law. It's named after an American linguist and Harvard professor, George Kingsley Ziff. He wasn't the first to discover it, though. Two others discovered it before Ziff, a French stenographer named Jean Baptiste Stoop and a German physicist named Felix Auerbach. Anyway, backtracking a bit. Ziff's law isn't just found in English, but also in every other language in the world. Ever. Not just language, either. It's also found in... City population solar flare intensity, website traffic, earthquake magnitudes, the size of moon craters, etc. But why? Is there an explanation to this? Well, not really. You see, scientists have come up with various theories, but there isn't any definitive proof to back these theories up. One possible explanation is that Ziff's law seems to line up well with the Pareto Principle. The Pareto Principle, discovered by Vilfredo Pareto, states that around 80% of the effects come from around 20% of the causes. Ziff's law follows this pattern. About 18% of words are used 82% of the time. Other examples of Pareto's principle. 80% of the problems in a project come from 20% of the work. 80% of software problems are caused by 20% of the bugs. 80% of customers online only use 20% of a product's features. 
80% of sales come from 20% of the products. And 80% of wealth is owned by 20% of the people. You may be wondering, couldn't that just be a coincidence? It's not a very specific connection, isn't it? I need more than that to convince me. Well, another possible explanation is the principle of least effort. This is the theory that George Ziff himself believed in. The principle of least effort states that humans will invariably follow the easiest or least risky path given to them. For example, let's say you are given two choices. One, you have a 40% chance of winning $10,000 but a 60% chance of losing $5,000. Two, you have an 80% chance of winning $800 and a 20% chance of losing $20. Which would you choose? According to most scientific studies, the majority of people would choose the second option. Social experiments such as the famous prisoner's dilemma involve the same principle. This applies to Ziff's law, as frequently used words tend to be less than five letters long and are typically only a single syllable. In fact, out of the top 100 most used English words, only two are longer than five letters, and only three are more than one syllable. Those words are about, because, and people. This came about because as language evolved, Speakers wish to expend as little time and effort as possible while still conveying their meaning to the listeners. Essentially, our language is what it is now because of the laziness of our ancestors. Of course, there isn't any concrete evidence to back this theory up. But it seems to make sense, doesn't it? Well then, I guess we've explained it. Thanks for watch. Wait a sec. This video is only 9 minutes long. Crap, I need a better mark than that. Sorry everyone, we're extending your boredom in order to get a better mark. Now, now back to our regularly scheduled programming. A third theory is that Ziff's law relates to preferential attachment processes. A preferential attachment process happens when things are distributed according to how much is already had. For example, let's say two different people have lemonade stands. Person 1 receives on average $20 an hour. Person 2 receives on average ten dollars an hour. Therefore, person one is making twice as much money as person two. In algebraic terms, x is equal to two y. With more money, person one can afford more supplies, thus expanding their business and increasing their profit. Person two can't keep up with person one because person 2 doesn't have the same economic resources person 1 is receiving. The longer the two compete in the business, the wider the gap will get between person 1 and person 2. Eventually, person 2 will be forced out of their job. This is just an example in business. Preferential attachment processes can also happen naturally. For example, with paper clips. So, how does this apply to Ziff's law? Well, as language was first being developed, single short words were the preferred choice. 
the possible reason for that being the principle of least effort. As time went on, the more popular words were used more and more, and eventually it turned into the languages that we know of today. So, what do these three theories tell us about language? Maybe it helps show how something that seems so complex can be explained so relatively easily. And maybe it also tells us something else. Since, after all, we are not all as complex as we may like to think. Thanks for watching.